Okay, take your Bibles, take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13. You know, once in a while we have testimony time and people stand up and they'll, they'll usually uh, say, I want to thank God for this, I want to thank God for my family, I want to thank God for or this or that or the other, uh, and truly, truly, God has blessed us in so, so many ways. But you know, uh, there's one blessing that God has give, given many of you that we never think about, that we never stop and think about. And so the title of my message this morning is the forgotten blessing. It's such a wonderful thing, and yet we never stop and think about it. It's the forgotten blessing. Look with me in the book of Matthew, chapter 13, and I'm going to read beginning with verse 10. Now, I read this Wednesday night, and it was studying for Wednesday night that this verse spoke to me, and uh, uh, that probably led to this as uh, I was praying about what to preach. But look with me, Matthew 13, beginning with verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, now listen to this verse. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore spake, spake, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the, prophecy, prophet, the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. Seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their eyes are dull, excuse me, and their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed, least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted and I should heal them. Look at verse 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God in heaven, God, how we thank you and praise you again for the, the opportunity to gather in thy house. Father, there are so many this morning who are unable, Lord, even to get out of bed. God, they cannot come to your house. and God, their hearts long to. God, people who are sick, people, Father, who have infirmities. But God, we're able, and we thank you for it. We praise you for it. God, we ask thy blessings now as we gather around thy word. And Lord, I confess to you that God, I am nothing, Father, and I can do nothing. Lord, I depend solely upon thee. And I ask you, in Jesus' name, Father, fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Give me the words to say and the way to say it. God, give me clarity of speech that God all might hear. And Father, give us eyes to see and ears to hear. And I pray, Lord, that God's souls will be touched and hearts will be changed. And I pray, Father, that You'll be uplifted, and Jesus will be glorified. 
Father, have your way. God will give you the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, certainly we all are thankful for our blessings. I mean, what are some of the blessings that you are thankful for? Someone would say, well, I, I'm thankful for the blessing of salvation. What a wonderful thing, and it is, let me tell you. If, you've never, if you're not saved, let me tell you, it is a wonderful thing. I'm thankful for the blessing of family. I'm thankful for the blessing of health. Health is a wonderful thing. I'm thankful for the blessing of material things, blessing of answered prayer. And for all these things, beloved, we give thanks to God as we should. I mean, where would we be without these blessings? Where would we be? You know, these are blessings, beloved, that, 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 that we have and that we enjoy. But, folks, there's one blessing. There's one blessing that many of you have that I have never heard anyone thank God for, and I'm including myself. Never heard anyone thank God for this blessing. And, and somebody says, what is it, preacher? What is it? Beloved, it is the forgotten blessing. It's found right here in verse 16. It's the blessing, listen, of having eyes to see and ears to hear. Think about that for a moment. What a blessing that is. Now, somebody says, Preacher, I'm thankful for my sight. I'm thankful for my hearing. I'm glad you are. You should be. But, folks, that, that's not what this is talking about. It's not talking about physical sight and physical hearing. It's talking about, beloved, being able are being given the ability to see spiritual things, to hear and understand spiritual truth. You know everybody doesn't have that. Oh, what a blessing it is to be able to see spiritual things, to hear spiritual truth and understand it. But do you know there are people, beloved, who can't see spiritual things, who can't hear beloved spiritual or can't understand spiritual truth. And we meet these people every day, every day. For example, have you ever talked to someone about the Lord? I mean, you, you talk to them about the Lord dying on that cross for them, about the Lord uh, bearing their sin, about the Lord being buried and the third day he rose from the dead conquering sin and death and by him you can be saved. And they don't seem to understand a word you're saying. They don't seem to grasp it because if they did, guess what? What would happen? They'd get saved but they don't understand they don't understand no matter how hard you try to explain. I mean, it's like they're in a fog and they just can't really comprehend it. Have you ever seen or have you ever, beloved, pointed out to people the signs of the Lord's coming, of his, I believe, soon coming? I mean, you know, uh, uh, they're happening all around us, but they can't see it. They can't see it. I mean, there, you, there they are plain as day. Israel becomes a nation again after 2,000 years. A globalism, beloved, setting the stage for Antichrist to come. Christ, uh, Christians and churches and whole denominations falling away from the faith, beloved. I mean, uh, 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 Russia, Turkey, Iran, uh, Libya, Sudan, all, beloved, aligning for the battle of Gog and Magog that the Bible talks about. And, and we see it. We see the lawlessness. We see, beloved, the Antichrist spirit increasing. And these things and more we're seeing, they were prophesied in God's word for the last days. It's so plain to see. 
yet you try to point it out to people and they just can't see it. They just can't see it. Why? Why can't they see? Because seeing, they see not. And hearing, they hear not. It's because, beloved, they don't have the ability to see the spiritual things, to hear the spiritual truth. But you do. You do, amen? You do as Christians, you do. Oh, listen, you are so blessed of God to have ears to, to hear and eyes to see. But that brings up an a, a, a interesting question. Why? Why, beloved, can you hear and see the spiritual, but they can't? Why? I mean, does God love you more than he loves them? I don't think so. Because the Bible says God so loved the world, amen, that he gave his only begotten son. Is it because God is a respecter of persons and, and maybe you're prettier than that one or you're richer than that one so God favors you over them? No, the Bible says God is no respecter. A person's. Why can, why can some beloved not see and not hear and others can see and hear so clearly? Beloved, it's the light and faith. Now follow me because I, I don't want to lose you on this. It's the light and faith. It's using the light you have by believing or believing that light. Believing that light. The Bible says, God gives to every man the measure. Every man, listen to me, every man has the power, the ability to believe. But beloved, it's up to the individual what you do with that ability. It's up to you whether you, you exercise that ability or not. It's up to you. Now, I got you totally confused. Let me see if I can straighten it out so you can see what I'm talking about. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 22, Jesus, beloved, healed a man who was possessed with a devil, with, demon, with a demon. The man, beloved, was blind and dumb. He could not speak. Jesus cast out the devil, and the man could both see and speak. Now, when he did this, the people were amazed. I mean, they had never seen anything like this before. I mean, if you knew someone who was blind and who, who could not speak, and, 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 and Jesus touched them and healed them, cast the, de the demon out of them, and they suddenly, beloved, could see and they could speak. Wouldn't you be amazed? Wouldn't you? The people were amazed at what Jesus had done. So they began to think. See, understanding started working its way light into their minds. And they said, is this not the Messiah? Is this not the promised son of David? Folks, Jesus had done many miracles for the people to see. He had taught many wonderful things for the people to hear. God had given them light. God had given them understanding. And they were beginning to exercise faith in what they were seeing, in what they were hearing. And they said, is not this the Messiah, the Messiah? I mean, he was doing things that only Messiah could do. He was fulfilling prophecies that only Messiah could fulfill. Gee, listen, God had given them light. God had given them understanding. And now, beloved, they had, to, they had but to put their faith in him, in him. Now, 
if the people could see that this was the Messiah, you can be sure that the Pharisees could see it. Because, beloved, listen, they were the religious leaders, amen? They were the religious scholars. They knew the scriptures. They knew the prophecies. They knew them better than the people did. Folks, they had more light. They had more understanding than the people did. But what did the Pharisees do when the people said that? They said, no. He cast out devils by Beelzebub, by Satan, by the devil. He, he cast out demons or devils by Beelzebub, the prince of darkness. Folks, they refused to put their faith in Jesus. They refused to put their faith in Jesus. They knew who he was, but they, beloved, refused to believe on him. They refused. So they rejected the light, the understanding that was given to them, refusing to acknowledge, beloved, uh, what they knew was true, what they saw, refusing to acknowledge what they heard. Now look at chapter 13. Next chapter over. At our text, verse 12. I'm going to read it again. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Now let me translate what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying in effect, if you don't use it, you lose it. You lose it. If you don't use the light you have, you will lose that light. But if you use the light you have, God will give you more light, more understanding, more understanding. Jesus said, if you don't lose, use the light you have, the understanding you have, if you don't put faith in that, you will lose it. And if you use the light, the understanding, if you accept it by faith, if you believe it, you will be given more light, more understanding. It'd be like if I was hungry. And I went to Bud and Susan's. And I and Susan looked at me and said, Rex, you're looking mighty thin. Martha's not feeding you, is she? I said, no, she's not. And she said, here. And she hands me a pancake. A pancake. And I look at Susan and I say, is that all you got? And Susan says, if you eat that, you'll get something else. But if you don't eat it, you ain't getting nothing else. So I eat the pancake. And then she gets, sits down in front of me a pot roast. And I say, oh boy. And I eat the pot roast. And then she sits down in front of me a great big steak. See, the more you use what you get, what, what, what's given to you, and beloved, if you use that, you get more. Amen? More understanding. But if you don't use that which you've got, that understanding you've got, beloved, that will be taken away from you. That'll be taken. That's what Jesus is saying right here after he had this encounter with the Pharisees. Folks, listen. That's... That's the way faith and understanding works. God gives us a little light, a little understanding, and if we use that, if we, if we use that understanding by believing it, beloved, he gives us more understanding. If we accept and believe that, he gives us more understanding. But folks, if we don't receive the light, the understanding that he gives us, if we don't receive it by faith, 
He will give us no more. In fact, he will take away the understanding that we have. That we have. Here's a man. He hears the gospel. Holy Spirit convicts his, convicts his heart of his sin. The Holy Spirit convinces him that this is true, that Jesus, that he's a sinner, that Jesus went to the cross and died for him and rose again. Now, beloved, he must use that understanding by, and by faith, beloved, receive Christ and be saved. And if he doesn't, somewhere down the road, he will lose that understanding. He will lose that conviction. But if he uses the light and gets saved, God will give him more light, more understanding. More understanding. So, why is it that some hear but see not? I'm excuse me, but, uh, some hear but and some don't. Why is it that some see and some don't? It's because, beloved, they haven't used the light. They haven't used the understanding that God has given to them. They haven't believed it. They haven't believed it. Hey, friend, listen. Jesus is coming soon. Can't you see the signs I mean, what about this? What about that? What about Israel being a nation? What about this happening, that happening? Can't you see it? Well, I just don't see it that way. I just don't see it that way. But it's right here. It's in God's Word. Listen to what God's Word says. Don't you hear? It, it, it's happening right before you. Sorry, sorry. I just don't see it that way. Folks, they don't have eyes that see spiritual things. They don't have ears that hear spiritual things. Oh, but Christian, you do. You do. Because you've used the light that God has given to you, so he gives you more. He gives you more. He gives you more. What a blessing to be able to see the spiritual things and hear the spiritual truth. You are so blessed that you do. Now, because you see and understand, you are blessed, listen to me, with peace, with peace. Preacher, what are you talking about? What greater peace can you have than to know there is a God in heaven? Amen? What, a God, beloved, that is almighty, that can do all things, that is all-knowing, a God that is sovereign and ruler over everything, a God, beloved, that, listen, you and I have been reconciled to, that we've been adopted into his family. But let me listen, we call him father, and he calls us son. Amen? Amen. A God who loves us unconditionally, no matter what we've done or, or what we, we failed to do. Beloved, a God who, 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 who loves us no matter how, how uh, wicked we may have been. You know something? We didn't know all that. We didn't understand all that until we by faith received Christ. I didn't know that, did you? Until I received him by faith. Oh, listen, we didn't know it, but we do now. We know it now. You see, he has given us more understanding, more understanding. We didn't know about all of his promises. When I got saved, I didn't know about all the promises of God. Promises like, come unto me, ye that are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
I didn't know. I didn't know, beloved, that God said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Lo, I am with thee even to the end of the, of the world. I didn't know that. I didn't know, beloved, that, that God says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. I didn't know that. I didn't know, beloved, that, I, I, that God promises to comfort, that he is the God of all comfort, or that he would strengthen us, or that he will protect us, or that he will provide for us. I didn't know all that before I got saved, and neither did you. Neither did you. But I know it now. I know it now. I know it now. How about this one? Romans 8, 28. I love this verse. For we know that all things, all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Whoa! I didn't know that when I got saved. All I knew was they told me Jesus died for me and rose again, and I believed it. And they said, if you'll receive him, he'll save your soul. That's all I knew. That's all I knew. But now I know, beloved, that even the bad things that God has promised, he'll take the bad things and make them for my good and for his glory. I didn't know that. And suddenly, beloved, listen, suddenly with all these promises, with all these wonderful truths about God, guess what? I don't fear anymore. I don't fear anymore. I got peace, the peace of God. How can I fear? I know that God, beloved, is my Father. I know he can do all things. I know my God, beloved, is providing for me and looking after me and taking care of me. I know that he's promised these wonderful things. What have I got to fear? What have I got? But do you know what? And I'm going to say this. Beloved, there are folks who call themselves Christian that are walking around scared to death Scared to death of all this stuff that's going on today. What's wrong? What's wrong? I've got peace. I'll tell you another great truth God showed me. I found this out by studying the word. Word. God has a purpose. God has a plan. He's got a plan for everything he does. And everything, listen to me, everything is going according to his purpose and plan. Everything. See, I learned, beloved, that God, I learned God gave me this light, this understanding. I learned that God, beloved, can take the evil of men and use it for his own purpose to bring glory to his name. That's what God did, beloved, with the evil of Pharaoh. Pharaoh was evil. God used his evil to bring glory to his name. And boy, did God get glorified through those plagues that he sent on the land of Egypt. That's what, that's what, what, what God did with the evil of Sodom in Lot's day. That's, God, that's what God did with the evil of Goliath. When Goliath, that giant, blasphemed the people of God and blasphemed heaven above, beloved, the God of heaven. And God, beloved, used his evil to bring glory to his name, to his name. That's what God did with the evil of Judas who betrayed the Son of God. God used his evil to bring glory to his name by bringing salvation to the world, to the world. You know, I look at the evil of this world today, and I'm going to be honest, it grieves me as it grieves God. 
But, beloved, it doesn't distress me. It doesn't distress me because I know that God, beloved, is using it, the evil of men, for his purpose, beloved, and to glorify his name. God's using Pelosi. Nobody left. Good. He's using it to glorify his name. God has a, a plan, folks, a plan for this world and a plan, beloved, for you and me. And nothing, nothing is going to interfere with God's plan. He is in control. He is in control. Amen. Praise God. And when his plan is finished, listen to me, all creation all in heaven and earth will be singing his praises and marveling at all that God has done. All that God has done. And because of that, because I have this light, this understanding, I have peace. I have peace. People are scared to death about the election. I'm not. I'm not scared about the election because I know who's in control. And I know, beloved, he's got a plan and he's got a purpose. Amen? Boy, that was a hard one to get out, wasn't it? Amen. Amen. Because of that, I have peace. Because I have ears to hear and eyes to see. Listen, I have joy. I have joy. Joy, beloved, that the world cannot understand. Somebody says, preacher, don't you know that we're in the middle of a pandemic? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. But it don't affect my joy. It don't affect my joy. Don't you know, preacher, that the globalists are trying to, to destroy democracy? Yes, I do. And they will. Eventually, they will. But it don't affect my joy. Preacher, how do you know they will? Because I hear it and see it in the Word. In the Word. Preacher, don't you know that socialism, communism are on the march Sure I do, but it don't diminish my joy. Preacher, uh, what if you get COVID-19 and die? Then I will die rejoicing and praising God, praising Him. Preacher, how can you say that? I can say it because God has given me more light, more understanding, because I see, beloved, the spiritual things. I can hear the spiritual truth. That's why. That's why. Folks, all, listen to me, all that's happening in this world, I can see what it means for this world. I can see. But I can see beyond that. I can see Jesus, beloved, returning and defeating the globalists and the communists and the socialists. I can see, beloved, uh, evil abounding on every side, but I can see beyond that. I can see, beloved, him taking that old servant, the devil, and casting him into the lake of fire, the one who's the author of wickedness and evil. I can see, I can see that it's possible that myself or my loved ones or my friends could die from COVID-19. I can see that. But I can see beyond that. I can see Jesus returning, beloved, in the clouds. And here, I can hear the voice of the archangel and the trump of God saying, come up hither. And I can see, beloved, the dead in Christ rising with those glorified bodies. Myself, my family, my friends, whoever, beloved, uh, that might be. I can see, beloved, the living changed. I can see that we are all caught up to be with the Lord in the air and forevermore be with him. 
I can see it. Oh, I see. I see earth passing away and the lights of glory. I hear angels singing shouts of hallelujah and happy reunions all around. I see streets of gold and walls of jasper. So many can't see and can't hear these things, but I can, I can. Oh, how blessed we are. How blessed we are to have eyes to see and ears to hear these great spiritual truths. Because of that, we have peace and we have joy even in the midst of this evil, wicked world. But because we have this understanding, we also have a very deep-seated sorrow. You see, we sorrow over those who cannot see, who cannot hear what we see and hear. Folks, we can see them even now, even right now, terrified at what's happening in this world. We can see the fear and uncertainty in their faces. Fear of every passing thing that comes along. It's everywhere, all around us, this fear. You see, folks, they have no hope. No hope. No hope. And that's going to become more and more obvious to them as things go along things go along and we sorrow for them we sorrow for them we can hear their cries as they realize one day that they've been left behind husbands crying for wives who've gone wives crying for husbands mothers and fathers crying for children that are missing we can hear it we can see and hear the dismay and the terror and the height of fear as wickedness, beloved, is let loose on this earth such as the world has never seen before as it will be in the tribulation. We can see and hear them crying, weeping, wailing, begging to die. Let me die crying and screaming from a scorching sun like the Bible says in Revelation. Crying for the rocks and the mountains to hide them from the face of Jesus who's coming. One they rejected. We can see and hear them before that great white throne when the books are opened and the book of life is opened. And we can see and hear their anguish and their fear and their torment as they are cast into that eternal lake of fire. And folks, if, that, if these sights and sounds don't feel you can't see, you can't. The only hope they have, the only hope is for them to receive Jesus today. Because tomorrow, tomorrow may be too late. And the only way they're going to ever hear is for us who can see and hear to tell them, to tell them of Jesus. The, because they have not ears to hear and eyes to see. It's for us to tell them and for the Holy Spirit to give them light that they might be saved. 
that they might be saved. They can't see and hear. But you can, Christian. What a blessing. What a blessing that you do. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Don't you thank God for that blessing? The forgotten blessing. One we never think about. That God has given you eyes to see and ears to hear. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. Aren't you thankful for that? You know, if you had not that, you'd have never received Christ. You'd have never gotten saved. And you would be as lost as those out there if God had not given you that spiritual sight and that ability to hear spiritual truth. Boy, we got so much to thank him for and praise him for. I want you to stand with me if you would. As you stand, I want you to think about someone. You know. Oh, how you need to pray for them. How you need to lift them up. Maybe you're here and you want to say, God, I just thank you. I just praise you that you gave me eyes to see and ears to hear. Whatever the reason, whatever the purpose, we invite you to come. If you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, we beseech you. The Spirit and the Bride say, come, come, come. And by faith to receive Him now. Use that light that God has given you and come, come. Won't you come right now? Won't you come? You got loved ones who are lost. Can you see them? Can you hear their cries in the depths of hell? That's where they'll be if they don't get saved. Won't you come? Won't you come? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, dear Lamb of God, I come. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer on behalf of these who come. You may be seated, heads bowed, and eyes closed. Thank God for the moving of His Holy Spirit. 